everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today we are actually gonna be answering a question from one of you all and I think this one was on my Belle Delphine video so it's been out there for a hot minute but you know better late than never right and you wanted to know about the difference between blanket consent and something called free use, which not a lot of people seem to know about. So we're going to be talking about what those things are, how they're different, how they work in a BDSM relationship. And it should be a very fascinating, controversial, possibly conversation. Now, before we get into it, you do need to know this is a 101 style video. It is not a 101 subject. It's much more of like a 200 level 300 level situation, you're going to want to know the basics about negotiations, affirmative consent, the Fry's model, SSC rec, that kind of thing in order to be able to follow along here. If you don't know what those things are, I'll have some videos linked down below to help you out with that and then come back here, revisit and rejoin the conversation. And this is probably going to be a challenging subject as well not because the material is hard to understand it's actually like pretty straightforward when you get into it but I think from a kink ethical perspective a lot of people may have a problem with some of the things I'm going to talk about so just like you know put our thinking caps on you know leave our judgment at the door here and let's talk about what's going on so First of all, let's talk about what blanket consent is. Blanket consent is a term used in the BDSM community, typically to denote a relationship where consent is given once for all things rather than being given on an act by act or case by case basis. That means once consent is given from that point forward, everything from acts to situations to play to scenes are all assumed to be consented to. Consent is assumed to be present when you have blanket consent from the time that you have it as part of a mutual agreement that is negotiated for after that basically everything is fair play is fair game now within blanket consent there are some variations limits and safe words don't tend to be a large feature in blanket consent if they are there at all most people that seem to have blanket consent as part of their relationship don't use limits or safe words, but they can be there in some certain respects. So for example, someone that has a blanket consent framework may have safe words, but not in the way that a person would typically use them. They are reserved for like an emergency, break the glass, I'm like breaking my arm, I'm going into a panic attack, you did something really terrible, like this is gonna end awfully, like warning, panic, like red alert. That is more what a safe word is for, not because of like the typical ways you might see it used in a BDSM relationship or during a scene. Limits, also kind of contentious. You typically won't see explicit limits or boundaries in a blanket consent scenario, but they maybe would include things like, you are not allowed to tell me to stop taking my birth control, or you are not allowed to tell me to quit my job. Like there might be some very like firm outer boundaries, but they're not as restrictive at bare minimum compared to a more typical BDSM relationship. Now, usually this only goes in one direction with the submissive giving blanket consent to their dominant partner, but I could also see this happening with two switches. Could you imagine the switch fights that would happen if you both had blanket consent? That would be pretty intense. Now, even though this might sound pretty fun, this is something that you should take very seriously. This is not a lighthearted fun, or we'll just kind of see how it works out type of a thing. It is a big deal to give that level of onward going consent to somebody. This is not a beginning of the relationship, getting to know each other, flexing how dominant or submissive we are kind of a thing. You really have to consider this very carefully, not only because it could have far reaching repercussions, but also because this kind of consent framework does unfortunately tend to attract predators that want to take advantage of that kind of framework to get away with whatever they want to do to another person. And also you might be someone where this sounds really hot, super fun, 
and you might want to just keep it as a fantasy for a little bit. It is totally valid to have this be like an online only fantasy role play type scenario and just keeping it there while you are still developing a more solid in-person BDSM relationship. There's a way to navigate these things as you're growing and learning as a BDSM person for sure. Generally this is something you'll see more in longer term relationships especially things like DS or MS relationships where it evolves naturally from having a really high level of transparency, vulnerability, trust, and just the time it takes to test these things out to really get to know someone and be able to trust, hey, can I tell you about this? Can I trust you to do this for me and have it not blow up my face or have it not turn out really dangerously? And that is so important because you need to have faith that they would not use this framework in order to manipulate you into doing something that is completely against your values. You really have to be in alignment when it comes to your values as a couple if you want to have something like blanket consent. Like, do you have the knowledge about them to know? Like, would they tell you to cut off all your hair or quit your job or to sell your car or to live in a yurt in the woods? Like, you have to know and expect what you're going to be getting from your partner and that's why it takes a long time to build up to this. Is even though there can be a level of surprise and blind trust, it shouldn't only be surprise and blind trust. You should really know your partner before getting into something like this. And so I find this style of BDSM works really well for people that have had years, decades of completely open, in sync communication. It shouldn't be something where you're bringing this into like a really high conflict relationship to try and make that work. This is for when you both already know you're really on the same page about things and you're kind of just naturally going in the direction of where the relationship wants to flow to. But even with that, even when you're totally on the same page, complete trust, complete transparency, this is not without risks and it should be something you take very, very strongly in terms of realizing how this might impact your life, especially if you want to take this in the direction that some people do of irrevocable consent, where blanket consent is seen as something that once it is given, you cannot take it back. It is not like, oh, take back, see, sorry, we're not doing this anymore. Like some people do consider blanket consent to also be irrevocable. And if you are going in that direction, definitely, definitely take your time getting there, okay? Because that is a difficult thing to go back from if you decide that's not really what you want. Probably the closest term you'll see in relation to blanket consent is something called free use, which also even has two kind of separate uses and definitions for it. But in the BDSM community, what this refers to is a relationship dynamic where consent is assumed and not even so much assumed as consent is moved away from as a requirement for the relationship. It's more the mentality of, I'm the D-type, I'm your Dom, because you're mine, you are just going to do whatever I say because that is what being in a total authority transfer or a power exchange relationship means. And this should be something that is wanted by both parties. It should be something that is negotiated for. It should be something that's talked about, but it is not even really thinking about a consent framework so much as it is we're in a relationship where your consent is not a requirement. You are just mine to do with as I please. And I will say one big key difference between blanket consent and free use is typically with free use, there's also sort of like the transitive property of free use that gets applied where it's not even just, okay, you consent to be used by me in whatever way I see fit, I can give you to other people and you have to do what they want or what I tell them to do with you. So you could have a free use dynamic where your dom could give you to somebody and you could be their practice dummy as they're a newbie dom. You could be told to give a presentation for a whole room of people or a demo bottom or you could be put in the middle of an orgy even potentially and just instructed to serve everyone there as your dom or your master would want you to. And there are some blanket consent people that do that as well where 
if your dom or your master whoever tells you to do something you would do it because that's part of your framework but I've also seen other people that have sort of like a sharing clause exception where it's like okay you're only consenting to do things with me but not with anyone else and that could be either because of the way that it's set up it could be because the relationship is just like exclusive monogamous and so that expectation would never be there but you can never make an assumption about which way that's going to go so talk about it with your partner make sure you know okay this is the way we're doing this because you especially do not want to be making any assumptions in any of these frameworks but especially this one now the other way you will see free use used is like completely separate non-bdsm not even necessarily very kinky fantasy or fetish. There's like a whole Reddit dedicated to it that's actually very popular. And when you see free use used in that way, typically what that refers to is when sex is seen as like as banal, as normal as just giving a handshake. It is basically when anyone, anywhere, at any time is consenting to a sexual act. Like you could walk up to somebody and they could be getting a coffee and then you just start, okay, we're gonna have sex now. We're like, you're walking around the park and then somebody just starts to have sex with you. And it's not seen as like an assaulty, negative, bad thing. Like actually the concept of assault, as far as I can tell from people who enjoy this aspect of free use is just like not a thing because everyone wants it, everyone's on board anytime anywhere people want to engage in this thing but it's not seen as like this like exclusive intimate secretive thing it's very out there it's very open and everyone's just like wanting to do it all the time and they do and they walk away they leave and everyone's happy so that might seem kind of strange but it's almost kind of like universal consent all the time but like universal enthusiastic consent which we like to see that's a good thing i think and it's just so interesting because that really goes to show how one phrase can be used by one community and mean something completely different somewhere else so definitely make sure if your partner brings up hey i'm into free use know which one you're talking about of those two options because they can definitely overlap but not always and you can't know until you ask and both of these terms, I would say, involve an ethical gray area that really tests our ability to go, okay, your kink is not my kink, but your kink is still okay. Because I know that some people will look at this and they will go, this is just nakedly abusive. Even talking about this is a bad idea. You are giving people permission to basically create relationship styles that could be very prone to or are inherently abusive. And I totally get that, I respect that. Not everyone is going to be into these things, but I can't ignore the fact that in our community, there are very many people who enjoy these things, that have them in their relationship, that get a lot of deep, genuine fulfillment and happiness out of having this be part of the relationship dynamic. And I don't wanna yuck anyone's yum. I don't wanna tell them, well, like, I don't think you can do this. And you know what, for me, I do have my own boundaries. Like I don't think that irrevocable consent is a good or healthy idea. Do people do it? Absolutely. Should you all know that people do it? Yes, because I don't want anyone to go into a negotiation for a relationship, for a scene, and do it totally blind, not knowing what other people might mean by certain terminology. So that's why we're talking about it. And also like, this might be your thing. You might not be satisfied with the type of power exchange relationship that you have. And it might be because what you really need in a relationship is that deep trust that facilitates something like having a blanket consent dynamic. And so yes, obviously you can be squicked out by all of this, but also it might be your exact cup of tea. This might be the thing that you were looking for in a relationship this whole time and just didn't have the language for it. So yes, it is risky. Yes, it is riskier than other forms of BDSM, but you can build to it. You can get there with dedication and with hard work. Now, one other term that I wanna talk about in this is a little something that many of you probably know more than these other terms so far. And it's called CNC or consensual non-consent. And I could do two videos about just CNC, honestly, because it is a very complicated, very like multi-use term within BDSM. And I'm gonna try and give an overview of 
what each one of those things are, what like the most common uses are. Because as it relates to blanket consent, I would say CNC gets used kind of synonymously with it. It's not like exactly the same, but a lot of people do see them as very related. So I would describe CNC in a relationship sense has the mentality of you are consenting to not having your consent be considered, whereas blanket consent means I have your consent for everything going forward. And that might seem like a really subtle difference. Like, hey, what does that really have to do with anything? They're basically the same thing. But for some people, that difference makes a big, big difference for their headspace, for their relationship mentality. And I would also say that with CNC, you are more likely to see safe words, you're more likely to see limits compared to blanket consent, but then again, compared to more like typical mainstream BDSM relationships, limits are a little bit squidgier, things like safe words are not as common, though they can still be there. And it is somewhat like with blanket consent where a safe word is more of a like, this is stopping the relationship, I am being injured, I'm going into a panic attack. That is typically more the use you will see in a CNC relationship framework for the use of a safe word. I would also say as a point of comparison between CNC and blanket consent that I would, I would mostly say that blanket consent tends to be more geared towards folks who are more like service or like training oriented in their DS or MS, whereas CNC I think appeals more to people that are like rough body play, resistance, bratting, mind fuckery, emotional sadism if that makes sense. It's not hard and fast between those two things. You can be one or the other and like both or, or do neither. Like it's not a, it's not that, that, that firm, but it is something where I do see a correlation where people tend to gravitate towards one or the other because of how, like I said, the framework of it changes your mentality or your approach, even if they might seem very similar. Now, I would say the more common way that you see CNC talked about in BDSM is not as a relationship framework, but as a way of playing or a way of doing a scene. And if you are using CNC as part of play or as part of a scene, it's typically because you don't necessarily want your partner or you don't want to know everything that's gonna happen during the scene. You maybe like surprise or fear play and you want to be able to play around with resisting your partner maybe a little bit as well, where you wanna be able to say, no, stop, please don't, safe word red, and not actually have that stop the scene. With CNC as play though, you are much, much more likely to see things like safe words and limits, so they are controversial. I do know some people that will say, if you have a safe word at all, it is not CNC. And I don't fully agree with that because as I have said many times, your dom, your top is not a mind reader. They are not going to be able to know everything going on with you and they are not necessarily going to see everything going on with you internally. If you twist an ankle or you break a nose or you're getting a nosebleed or anything else like that, they might not notice that and you might need a safe word to indicate, hey, this thing is happening just like really quickly, really briefly. So I think that safe words do make sense for some folks if they want that in their CNC play and also with limits. Limits can be something that's absolutely part of a CNC scene. You could have CNC mean a temporary no limits experience where once the scene is over, those limits are back in place or you could have CNC in the sense of we are doing some boundary pushing, playing with soft limits, but hard limits still are not okay to push up against. And basically what CNC means in this context is that you are consenting to not knowing everything that's gonna happen in a scene. There could be some surprises and during that specific period, you're not gonna know everything that your dom or your top is planning to do. You won't know those details ahead of time and saying things like no or stop and resisting is not necessarily going to stop the scene. And on that note really quickly, I do want to add that with safe words, some people will within a CNC scene have a real safe word, it's like a secondary one where you can say red, stop, that kind of a thing, but then they have like 
mercy or really red be the actual safe word so that we can play around with those boundaries without really not having any at all. But I don't necessarily recommend that. I think it can be confusing for a dom or a top to hear things like safe word and red, which are typically house safe words that would need to be respected in a public context, like being violated in private and then having like a secondary secret safe word that's just like really safe word, double safe word. Some people like playing with that. I would just be cautious with that because it can be confusing, especially when you play with more than one person. Now on a final note, some people mean CNC not as like an umbrella term for like any of a number of different consensual and non-consent scenarios, but they essentially mean like rate play, role play with like a nicer, more like sensitive label on it where all the limits are there, all the safe words, all the negotiations, like you're going to know everything that happens, all that stuff. It's just about referring to a type of role play more than anything else. And I don't really agree with that because that is a very narrow, particular experience. And I get why people would like use that label to mean that because when most people kind of learn about consensual non-consent, it's in the context of what I will call sexual resistance play, where it's about saying, no, stop, please don't. And like kind of living out that fantasy that so many people have, but because CNC is so much more broad than that, not to minimize this kind of resistance play because it can be very mental, very emotional. It can be very taxing on both or all of the participants. So do not take it lightly, no matter what version of CNC you want to engage in. It's just, it's something that's gotta be very carefully considered, as I've already said multiple times so far in this video. But that is basically where I wanted to wrap things up. That's all I really have to say about the differences between blanket consent, CNC, free use, all of that stuff. And I would love to know what you all think about this in a comment down below. Have you heard of this stuff before? What do you think about it? Should I do a follow-up talking about CNC and consensual non-consent in more depth? I would love to know everything that you all are thinking about that. And yeah, it's just, it's a very, interesting area of BDSM that not many people get to explore or really talk about. And I'm happy to shed a light on this. And I don't want anyone to like walk away from this, like thinking, oh my gosh, like if I'm in a DS relationship, I have to have blanket consent. If I'm a true slave or a true submissive, it is not about meeting anyone else's standards for being the most submissive or being the most body mist bottom with no limits. I don't want anyone to like take this as being like, ah, this is how I say, do whatever you want to me, mistress. I have no limits and like a fancier, more acceptable package. Don't, no, bad, stop, squirt bottle. Okay, stop, don't do it. <laughs> You've been warned, stop. That is not what this is for. This can take a long time to build up to. And if it's not your thing, totally valid. If it is your thing, totally go for it. And because all these terms can mean different things to different people, I am not trying to say that my version of this is like the definite, absolute, this is exactly what all these terms mean, sort of a thing that is not what this is. This is my best guess on how I think most people in the community see these terms, but because everything is so individual. If you want to talk about this with a partner, really make sure you both know how you see these terms together and not necessarily what you assume people think it is based on what I've said. Because again, this is very, very variable. And of course, this is not going to be for everyone. Not everyone enjoys every single kink. Some people really like more of like a nurturing, soft, gentle approach to their BDSM. Other people like knowing that their partner is in total, complete control. And some people like mixing both of those two things together. So just remember, it's not about meeting anyone's standards for being submissive enough or dominant enough or anything like that. It is about finding the kinks that work for you and make you happy in your BDSM journey. And that is really, again, 
all I have to say. I would love to know your thoughts in a comment down below. If you have not already and you would like to, please go ahead and subscribe. I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics. And finally, if you want to support what I do, the best you can do that is with Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.